cutting razor wire. In rescue, we have to do it all the time. Happens frequently, we get animals and birds caught in razor wire. And if you've ever uh, encountered razor wire, you know that it just catches on everything. Such a simple design, but so much worse than barbed wire or snare wire. I've had trouble cutting this in the past, and in rescue terms, it's usually up high, so you have to cut up high. There's an animal in there that's gonna be getting more and more damaged as you move around, so you've gotta be quite precise with what you're doing can be difficult to be precise when applying with something like this. So what I wanted to find out are, are the other tools that we might have, are they better? Certainly they're better than this if it's at home, but that's not too heavy to have in the back of your car. Um, and then I've got these various different tools to compare, and that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'll let you know what works for freeing wildlife from razor wire and how to cut razor wire. So these are the tools that we're going to have to try and cut through this razor wire. Now it starts with obviously bolt cutters. Uh, it comes with its own set of problems. First of all, you may not have it when you're out and about a rescue. And also you might find that when you're using it with uh, razor wire, it's up high and it can be difficult to use a heavy bolt cutter to be precise. It's also a two handed operation, which means you're not securing the animal while you use this. And the worst case scenario there is that you free the animal and it just runs away and dies, or flies away and dies somewhere else. And that's where the one-handed tools really come into their own. Uh, you're going to inherit tools. People are going to give you tools. You're going to use them uh, in rescue. I've used this one a lot. It's been really, really good cutting through football nets, snare wires, things like that, barbed wire. But uh, not, not actually good enough to cut through the razor wire. You might have a secateurs. Again, people inherit these or just have them, and it's great for when you're trying to get an animal out of thick bushes or brambles and things like that. The, animals don't, the brambles die away generally every year, so you have no problem with cutting them up. And then we've got these uh, multi-tools, a Victorian Ox Swiss tool, um, an SOG Power Deluxe or something like that. I can't remember what it's called, but I like this, and it has a compound putting in a pliers device, and then just a really cheap multi-tool, which is the kind of thing a lot of wildlife rescuers are gonna have and are gonna carry. So we're gonna try putting all of these now. Okay, so let's start off with this. Um, razor wire comes with a, a sheath, sheath of razory stuff on top of this quite hard steel wire. And um, just for the steel wire, yeah, it flies through that no problem. And let's see if it can go through the sheath because this is one of the things that adds to the difficulty of it. Okay, yeah, it didn't pop away, but it did break that off. Will it go through both at the same time? Let me just start over here. No problem, but, and can I do it without using the ground to assure it? Yeah, and obviously that time I had the um, the wire uh, seated as low down on the, on the teeth as I could. So you would expect that to be able to do its thing. The next thing I suppose I'll try with this, same thing, I'm going to try and cut through the steel all by itself. Yes, but quite difficult. And what about that sheet? No problem doing that. What about both? Again, I've got that as low down on the teeth as I can, and then here. Very difficult to get these. Yeah, eventually I did. Like I said to you, I have a very strong grip. I can do about 70 kilos of closing force. I climb a lot. I can do 30 pull-ups. I do 10 muscle-ups, so I'm strong in grip. Uh, I kind of doubt this is gonna go through anything Yes, eventually through that. I'm doing them just in separate chunks, just because I can, but in this, get that really deep. Yeah, I need to struggle in. Um, no. All right, so we've seen that this can, this can't. Obviously that can. So now these guys have already used them. Just 
we get on video. So this is the SOG power access to lux with this compound style of clipping. And when I put it in here, yeah, it cuts nicely, but I feel like it's kind of, it's not loving it. And then the Victoria Knox. Again, these are just going straight through both sheet and sheet and line. So that did just break through, did it? No. Went through the sheet. So the problem with the Victoria Knox is that it's kind of hard to aim. It's hard to get it on target and get it cutting through what I wanted to cut through. But I know that it can. So again, if I had this, if this was up in the air floating, and I managed to get this in here, it's kind of close. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's cut the sheath off, and that means that my next thing would need to go in here. But it's becoming a two, a two handed job, kind of no matter what. Yeah, so it's. it's able to do it. It's not taking any damage. Let me try the SOG again. Here, I don't know if this is called SOG or SOG. So let's say I'm here. No. It's not going to be a one handed job, but it definitely cuts easier. Um, and also, the teeth are much deeper, so it's much easier to get stuff on target. This just doesn't have a hope. Uh, tried it, couldn't do it at all. Um, bigger teeth, I guess, but it's really getting beat up. It's also not very comfortable in the hand, so you end up just wrecking your hands. The takeaway at the end of this is if you're gonna be cutting razor wire, you can definitely cut the sheath off and then cut the core, and that's actually not too difficult. The sum of their parts is much more than what you would think. Bolt cutters obviously goes through no problem. Is that more difficult to use than either of these? I don't know that it is because you're going to probably have to grip with two hands anyway. Um, this, surprisingly, this is a pretty cheap tool, a towel tools. Um, snips and it did fine this needle nose not a hope didn't even try this because it's not going to work and surprisingly this old victorian ox uh, did a really really good job um for what it is so very impressed very impressed as predicted pretty impressed by that too for the money that was probably like 10 euro uh cheap Multi-tool, probably very good for other things, not this. Um, so there we have it. Let me line these up and show this. Okay, so as you can imagine, this works. It's a two-hand job, but pretty much all of them are a two-hand job. So I'd kind of recommend having this on hand if you can. This was a big surprise. You can see that the cutting edge is quite short on it, but nonetheless, this really impressed me with its ability to do the job. Um, and, and remain intact, take minimal damage. This is great, exactly as I'd hoped when I bought it, that this compound motion and these very deep cutting edges would make light work of that. That would work really well. It's also a very light, slinky little tool. Uh, I have this for firearms, primarily uh, from anti-poaching in Africa. And then this, again, this is probably a 10 euro kind of tool and it did the job. So good get this and uh, keep it in your car cheap multi-tools are great everybody should have a few cheap multi-tools because sometimes you do stuff where you might drop it you might lose it you might damage it and nine times out of ten they do the job that they need to do so uh good one to have needle nose not a hope of doing the job in this instance but you know that's not what this is designed for again worth having if you want to extract something out of something or other um just to show you the damage that this cheap when they incurred anyway. and then obviously the secretaries as a cutting tool something that you do want to have in your kit if you're doing animal rescue but it's never going to cut 
wire really of any significance. Any cutting tool, what you want is the longest lever before the fulcrum, and you want what you're cutting to be as deep down in amongst those teeth as possible. That goes for all of these. They all work the same way essentially, but what we need is to be able to cut as deep as possible. No point taking a tool and having the very tip of it on you. First of all, it's less secure, it'll slip out more often. You wanna get this and wedge it right up as deep as you can. And then you kind of wanna hold it almost as far back as possible as well, while not compromising the power you can put in through your grip. If we're rescuing wildlife, we're almost certainly gonna want somebody to be holding that animal or protecting it. And I found that sometimes untying an animal from this is a good approach. Also, you can cut the razor wire away from the animal, get it secure and lift it down, and then you might be able to peel the razor wire away, or even transport it to the vet and take it off there. However, likelihood is the animal is going to injure itself more and more badly. Um, remember that you don't want to free the animal, only to have it fly away or run away and die of its injuries. So you need to have it secured, whatever you're doing. You also don't want it just to lose an eye because that's a put to sleep uh, situation in any wild animal. Okay, so there you have it. The big news is if you're serious about wildlife rescue and you're encountering these things often, invest in bolt cutters. You're gonna need them for all kinds of things, not just this. Definitely have multi-tools and I love, I've always loved my Victorian Ox, that's 20 years old. Um, and I got this SOG, like I said, to work with firearms in the anti-poaching environment in Africa. And it's brilliant, I love this. And it, it, it's done exactly what I hoped it would do with the razor wire. The cheap, the cheap ones, uh, the Tala tools, this is just a snips. Uh, could go a bit bigger on this and it would be more powerful, certainly go with, uh, with longer levers. And, um, but that probably cost me 10 quid and does the job really, really well. Cheap multi-tool, you should have a cheap multi-tool. Why not? Maybe have two, maybe you need a second, a second grip while cutting. Maybe you want to hold this while cutting with this. Maybe you want to strip off something. Uh, you can never have too many, and this is a good one. Just get a cheap, handy one. If you inherit tools, as, as everybody can, once people know that you want and use tools, you can inherit this. These are a will made in Germany. They're totally fine for something else. They're useful nonetheless. And definitely, again, useful if you need to get under um, let's say an animal is snared and you need to get underneath it, that can be very useful. Or what I'll sometimes do is put something like this underneath a cable and then spread out like this so that I have the space, the workspace to take this in the clip. So, worth having. Before you encounter razor wire, you're going to be getting an animal out of somewhere that has a lot of brambles, or bushes and things like that. Brambles particularly die back every year, so it's not like I'm saying cut down trees or cut animals you know, nesting sites, but there's going to be lots of occasions where cutting through brambles is going to make your life so much easier, especially trying to get an animal out of there that's going to get caught and everything along the way. So have a, have a secretaries and again, inherit them. Um, this would probably belong to my mother or something like that. Um, so yeah, there's the tools. Um, best to have them and not need them. Thanks so much for watching. If you learned anything and you liked anything in this, please Click like, subscribe if you want more information like this. If you've got any questions about any of these things, um, drop them in the comments and I will answer them. And um, yeah, let's keep trying to improve the standards of wildlife rescue as it goes. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, man.